Well, good morning. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, class this morning. <clears throat> and I know our series is, has been uh, spectacular. I, I really have enjoyed it about uh, personal evangelism and how important it is. And so we're going to continue on that. And I may jump ahead, may, may uh, step on some topics that Jake or Matt may cover future uh, in the future. Uh, I will for sure do that. But this morning, we're really going to look at expectations of a Christian. And so uh, what I would like to say is this is, this is a topic that we could spend a long amount of time on. I mean, weeks upon weeks of the expect, expectation of a Christian. But I'm going to try to shorten it real quick. You know, make it real short for us, especially for Bible class. But we could spend several weeks and still not cover all that we need to cover for the expectation of a Christian. So what I want to do real quick is I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to open it up. I know some people are a little leery of opening up questions to the audience because we could go down some rabbit trails. Uh, but I like to trace, chase rabbits so, and, and a few squirrels. So, here's my question. Let's, let's really look at the new convert. A new convert. What is that new convert's expectation now that they are a Christian? So, I'm opening it up. What should be some of those expectations? Expectations of a new convert as a new Christian. Yes. What happened? Right. What happened? So twofold. What's the expectation of us as the um, the Christians that are there to help them, help support them? And then what's the expectation for them? I know Matt's going to talk about that December the 18th title, They've Obeyed, Now What? So he's really going to cover in that. But there's two questions from that, what you just brought up. So let's, let's look at the new convert. What is their expectation now that they're a Christian? Us follow through, and then we've got a study. Who studies? The new convert? What do they study? Maybe they don't know. So the expectation of a new convert, new Christian, is just intertwined with the expectation of us as Christians. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it goes hand in hand because are they going to know what to do? Think about the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, Philip comes there and says, hey, what are you studying? He says, how do I? I don't know unless somebody teaches me. And so there is an expectation from us that we have to be doing something so that they know and can see the expectation of what they're supposed to do. Okay, so what I want to... Real quick is I want to think about these things. Look at these three, three priorities of a new Christian or a new believer, new Christian. Teach them first steps and practices to grow in their relationship with Jesus. I mean, they believe. They have fallen in love with him and they say, hey, he's, he's here to change my life. Now what? And so we're going to help them in the first steps and practices to grow in their relationship with Jesus, get them connected in as much as possible with the church, right? I mean, that should be part of that. So what we need to be doing as we're studying with someone, a potential Christian, as we're studying with them, we have to help them understand that it's not a one and done thing because there's, there's so many out there that think, I believe, I'm secured. 
I come across people all the time. I believe I'm secured. Well, that's not the case. We're going to have to be doing something. So we have to, we have to help them in this, in this study, in this personal evangelism, to help them understand that they have to get connected with people in the church. Or they have to get connected with the church. I'm sorry. So they are the church. They get connected. They find uh, anything and everything they can that they are good at to help spread the gospel. And then the last thing I, I, um, I thought about is help them learn to love the Bible. Because there's so many times these, these, we will tell them, people will study, and everything is great. And then what happens? They, they forget to open up the Word. They forget to open that up. And I, I'll tell you, that's, that's even a fault of Christians that have been a while. E even preachers. We get so caught up in the work that we forget our relationship with God. And that's what causes problems. I, I can tell you, my assumption is there's, there's some leading atheists out there that were actually former preachers, missionaries. And I, I wholeheartedly believe it's because they were so caught up in the work that they forgot about their relationship with God. They did. So they said, why? What's the point? They forgot. So we have to help them love the Bible, not just love the Bible, but what else? What's that? Study. Mm -hmm. Love the person. We, we have to help them love the Bible so that they can continue to go back to the Bible for their guidance, for their understanding. Because we know there's so many books out there for us to get caught up in the reading when we really should be reading this. And we have to be careful because some of those things just don't align with this. So we help them love the Bible, help them know that that's where we've got to fall back on. Hey, just kind of, just open this up again. Have, we ever, have you ever come across someone who has a, um, become a Christian, was living faithful, and then all of a sudden no longer does? How long was it after they became a Christian? Maybe you have some that's happened fairly quickly. Maybe you've had some that's a few years, maybe a little bit longer than that. So these are some things that we as um, experienced Christians, I'm not even sure that's the word, but aged Christians, we should be following as well. We should be. Have the, continue to make sure we have the relationship with Jesus. Get connected as much as we can and learn to love the Bible. So those are three things that not just new converts can do, but those are things that we can continue to do. So, <clears throat> yes, sir. There's, there's a reason that we're supposed to help each other get, get to the point. Our ultimate goal is the same, right? L at least it should be, and, and that's eternity in heaven. Yes, sir.
Yes. Right. Yep. And and you bring up a good point, and I thought about this, and I was going to write it down and forgot, but he talked about milk and meat. Milk and meat. And what I guess I've come to realize is there's, there's a lot of Christians that have been Christians for a very long time that are still on the milk, and they really should be on the meat. Yes, sir. Yep. Very good point. Which is another expectation of a Christian. We have to see, we have to see that that is who we are. We are in the soul winning business and trying to keep them serving God. That's what we're here. Yes, sir. At the same time, we need to realize that the devil's after Christians. He's got everybody else. He's after Christians. And the thing about it is he's going to go after that new one really quick, really hard because they are very susceptible. And the rest of us, we need to make sure that we're reinforcing them in the truth and in the wisdom that God has provided us in the Scripture. Yes, sir. And how do we do that? We get them into the Scripture just like we should be in the Scripture. That's right. We do a good job of setting the example for them prior to their baptism. But after that, are we doing what we really need to be doing? Great point. Sometimes we just turn loose, don't we? Yes, sir. That's, that's a very good challenge. Would you like to switch with me? <laughs> that, I mean, that's it. I mean, that is a, that is a great point, a great challenge for us all. Um, yes, ma'am. That's very good. You know, remind yes, sir, I'll let you do that and then I'll say something. And Matt brought up whenever he was teaching the class that the, the, the one single element that makes it so difficult for people to really believe in, and, and be baptized is mom and dad. That is the very most difficult thing for them to be with. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. That's a great, great point. Of course, I'm going to put on the principal hat real quick and kind of tell you. There is, we have an evaluation system, right? It's called T-TEST. And one of those is a domain. Now, I'm not even sure what T-TEST stands for, to be honest with you. Just know that we have to use it to evaluate teachers. But one of those that takes you from a rock star teacher to the next level is helping 
children avoid common pitfalls. Like that's one of those things. If you check it, then we, we, advance, we look at advancing the teacher over to the accomplished mark. So that is a great point. I mean, even, even in, in the teaching world, they see how important that is to help them and prepare them when they are going to experience those things. So now I'm taking the principal hat off. <clears throat> now I'll, now I, I want to go to a few things, and we may not be able to cover all that I have, but that's okay. Because one of the things, the expectations of a Christian, and, and here, is where, here is where I see the uh, Americanization of this, is we have to understand, we have to understand that it is, it is contrary to the New Testament that I can be a Christian and not come to fellowship with my brothers and sisters. That is something that you see a lot. I, I'm a Christian. I'm good. I, I really don't have to go. That's, that goes against what we see here. And I really want to point that out. And there's a few things I want to point out is the fact that as a, as a Christian, there's an expectation for me to attend all, and that's underlined, highlighted, squared, circled, whatever you want to do, all the meetings of the church. Now, I do understand that there's things that come up, but we have to set it in our hearts and our minds that we are going to do everything we possibly can to attend as much as we can. Yes, sir. It's a precursor to what, what we're going to experience. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great point. It's like, yes, we need to attend all the meetings of the church. Now, that's not just coming for the corporate worship. That's not just coming for corporate worship. That is doing everything you can. And we're going to talk about that this morning um, in the lesson. But we need to make sure that we are attending all the meetings of the church. I mean, you think about Hebrews 10. Yes, sir. He has a love for sports as well, right? Am I correct? Yeah, but I just show one thing. Uh, my dad coached Little League baseball at one time. And it, it is hilarious. You'd have some little kids that would never show up to practice. But their parents would get so angry that they weren't being able to be in a fine position to play during the games. I know that's probably not a good experience, but... You know, you got to show up, and, and the practice is this. It's that affiliation and that osmosis activity that happens between the brotherhood when we meet together. It's that element of support. It might be like um, Brother Morgan said a minute ago. You may, not, you may not feel like showing up, but I'm telling you, you will never, ever regret doing so. It's kind of like a day at, at work. We all don't want to get up and get dressed and all that. We understand that, but there, there's a synergy that occurs that cannot be explained by fellowship. Even right now, this is a blessed moment of fellowship and encouragement. And it's just good medicine. You gotta, you gotta show up. Yep. You gotta show up. Yes, I, I love being here because it helps me. You know, there's, there's an old cliche that says, you know, the eighty twenty rule, which we can beat the dirt real quick, but it's fun to talk about. But 80% of success is just showing up. You can be the dingo that shows up at work regularly and that's not a brilliant mind, not be a rocket scientist, not be the top salesman, but you're reliable, you're dependable, and you're there to encourage others. You pretty well have, you're pretty well on the right track. I'm pretty sure that's how I passed college, just making sure I was at class. <laughs> Now, Scott has always made sure that every coach understands Wednesday night 
so few of them do now that what used to be considered like Wednesday, holy cow, don't do it. Their parents will, you know, absolutely come in and act for your head. Now, you know, we reserve Wednesday nights for worship and hardly anybody takes advantage. Right. Because it's a sad shift. It, it is sad and there's so much that we get from that fellowship. That, it, that is so crucial and so important to our walk. And, and that's, I believe that's an expectation that we've got to look at uh, more so because we can't just look at someone and go, hey, where were you? But yet we can. You know, you know and that, that's what also should take place. And so that's kind of difficult. Uh, and, but that goes with building relationships with people that there must be that expectation from a Christian to have expectations from a fellow Christian. So Hebrews chapter 10, you can look at 19 through 25 and see some, some very important things. We really don't have much, much time, but I'm going to try to skim through this. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest... Over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. He who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. You see that? See that expectation for us? Not for, let, us, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see the benefits of us being here? The benefits, not just on corporate worship, but any time there's an opportunity. You know, that's the church on the move. That, that's, there's where we are because we have shut-ins that we're visiting and what's that doing to them? We're considering one another and what are we doing? We're stirring up love and good works in this individual who's not able to be with us but longs to be with us. So those are, those are really good things. When the Hebrew writer penned this passage, the church was experiencing a, experiencing a number of sin problems. Some were being hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's Hebrews 3, 12 through 13. Some were remaining immature as Christians. Well, we see that today, don't we? And we go, oh, the world's just getting bad. Well, no, they experienced then. They experienced it then. So those are things that, that we just happen to have a TV or a cell phone that shoots it right in our face right when it happens. It's, it happened back then. Um, so Hebrews 5.12 shows that they were immature as Christians and some were falling away from, G from Jesus, Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. Some were living immoral lives and were bitter and were causing others to be lost. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a lot of people that I know that claim to be Christians but have bitterness. And they, you see it and you hear it. Now, is that going to bring somebody to Jesus? It's not. So as an expectation for it, that doesn't mean there's rainbows and butterflies all the time. I know Matt, I'm going to steal that quote from me. But there's, there's not going to be as Christians. But they should, should see a joy in us. There's the expectation, a joy in us. So that the light, so that then, then what? Spreads. So that that light is transferred and all of a sudden we've had another light. Because if we're bitter, as Hebrews 12, 14 through 15 says, we see that that bitterness was causing others to be lost. That happens today. We get Christians that are upset. I've heard many Christians, well, the preacher didn't say hi to me at Walmart. He didn't even look at me, so I'm not going anymore. I've heard that. True story. But we can't, that's, that's not the way it is. And if you... Go to Walmart, you really, some of you may not want to be in Walmart. You just have to be there. So you're trying to get to what you need to do and get out. And you don't really want to talk to anybody else. So you're not intentionally ignoring anybody. But still, we cannot put our faith on someone else. 
We are responsible for that. In, in verse 22 of, of Hebrews 10, he says, Let us draw near to God. Near to God. Verse 23, Hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Look at verse 24. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good works. The Hebrew writer understood that they needed each other's strength to remain strong in the faith. In verse 25, which we've probably heard all of our lives and could, could quote it without even looking at the Bible, but not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Those are some, those are some expectations for us as Christians. Which is why it's important to be at every fellowship that we can. So why do we attend? What's, what's the expectation of why we attend? Matthew 18, 20. For where there are two or three that come together in my name, there am I with them. That's Matthew 18, 20. That's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I'll be there. Jesus is with us as we commune. Matthew 26, verses 27 through 29. There are some benefits of that expectation. And again, we have to realize it's not because we have to. It's because look at these gains that happen when we do it. It may be hard. We talk about sports. When, when we're trying to get better, when we're trying to, to work out and get better at whatever area that is, at first, what happens? We hit a wall quick, don't we? I know I do, and I'm ready to do what? Quit. Most time I do. It's like running. Michael, thank goodness, has been trying to hold me accountable, and I've been failing him this past week. But uh, you, you hit, a certain, hit a certain point running, and your side starts hurting. It doesn't matter how much you pull on your side. You still can't go further. But you hit that wall. What happens when you push through? You go a little bit further. And then, then, then you hit another wall. And you push through. And you push through and you push through. And the next thing you know, you've come leaps and bounds from where you were initially. We attend because if we look at worship, it's because it is there to show our love and our gratitude for what God has done for us. That's why that is a very important expectation because of the benefits that come from that. When we think, when we think of all that God has done, it is one way that we can sacrifice ourselves to him we say i am now giving up myself and i'm going to come and think solely on you solely on you so do i have to attend all of those services here's the thing he wants you to be there he wants you to be here Going back to this, because we strengthen each other and we need that. So as we are, we are working with those future converts, when we are out there, we're studying with them, we have to impress upon them the importance of being together because we strengthen each other. And then we, in turn, need to do the same. Hebrews 10, 24, ask us to consider how to stimulate to love and good works. Acts chapter 2, 42 through 45, others uh, strong in their faith encourage and strengthen me. So your faith strengthens me. So why are you here? Because you have to be? Yes, sir. He 
didn't go running out in the middle of that herd of zebras and, and grab the zebras from them. They wait for the one that goes off all by itself. That's the one they go jump on and eat from. The devil's a liar. Scripture tells us he's a roaring lion seeking who he wants to devour. He's waiting for us, whether it's us, whether it's a new Christian, he's waiting for us to go off alone and get away from the pack. And that's when he's going to pounce on the zebra. Yep. And so we've got to make sure, A, that we're not straying from the pack. We've also got to keep our eyes out for the other ones that are straying from the pack, straying from the herd, and go grab them and bring them back so that lion doesn't jump on the zebra. Yep. So how do, how do we express that to individuals? How do we express that? I'm going to open that up. Yes, sir. Very good. Run back to the pack. I like that. Yes. That's, that's exactly right. And that gets me to the next point. It's like we plan this. I talked to them before, and we just plan this, the segue there. But we have to understand that we are here for an example to others. So we're encouraging, but we're here for an example to others. Somebody was going to say something earlier. I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> yep. That's, that's a very good point. Yes, sir. Not forsaking the sin of ourselves together? Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Paul says we ought to set a good example for others. It certainly would be disappointing to others if I urged them to attend and I was not there. Where, where's Kendi? I, you know, I've just been I went talking to him at, at Brookshire's. He was telling me about the... He was telling me about the chicken, and it was good. And we were talking about church, and I thought he was going to be here. And it just, what happens, what happens to you? What happens to your spirit when Kenley's not there? It kind of hurts your spirit. So there, we, we have to work together and understand the importance of that. So we want to impress also, also, as Christian parents. Here we go, as Christian parents, we have to... We have to impress upon our children the necessity of church attendance. We do. We, we sure do. Now, that doesn't mean that I go and check and that's it. That's why the whole thing was in, I'm, I'm attending all opportunities, all services through the church. So that's not just corporate worship, but it is very important that your children understand that they need to be here. They need to be here. I believe that is... That is very much a part of Proverbs 22 6. You train that child in the way they should go. I have a question. Uh, and this is pretty much an assumption that I, I've heard both ways from the scripture where it says the day approaches. I've heard that as the day of judgment, I've heard it as the day like the first day. Actual language, original language. 
Well, I, I <laughs> well, I wish I would have studied that a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 either way, it doesn't matter. If we are if we are fellowshipping, I think that increases and helps us. So, but I, I'm gonna look into that. The next day, yes, sir. Right. We don't berate them when they're not here. We encourage them to come, and then if they're not here, it's a, I missed you. We really want you to be here. I've been praying for you. Not that it's a matter of us taking attendance and you weren't here. Yeah. You know, like, where were you? We, you know, you haven't been here. And because that, that discourages far more than whatever. It sure does. Heard. Yeah, it's, it's in how we say it. Yes. Yeah, it's all in how we say it and how we encourage. Not, you know, you've been missing, and that's wrong. Yes. That's exactly right. We're not interested in the number in the back. We're interested in their soul and the encouragement that they bring to us and the encouragement that they get from me. And that is great. And there are multiple things that I know we miss, but I, I believe this. I'm gonna, we must understand the expectation placed upon us as Christians is, is not a name-only religion. It's not name only. It's not to say I'm a Christian and that's it. It is living out our faith. It is working for the Lord. People know whom you belong to by your devotion to them. So our expectation as we are studying, as, as, as we are studying with those potential converts, as we are talking to new Christians, as we ourselves are Christians, no matter what age, how long? It's been since 2001. I've been a Christian since 2001. August, the day before my mom's birthday. I remember. But we have to understand that no matter your age, you need to be devoted to God. You need to be devoted to serving Him. So with that, I'm going to end it. Thank you very much for today.